Patricia Somerset, welcome to the Game Former Show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's nice to have you. Uh, we don't have too many actors on the show, so it's always a it's a unique take. Uh, so you are the voice of Princess Zelda. I don't know if you're aware of this. Um, I am. Uh, I guess I'm aware of it. Okay. Yes. Oh my gosh, am I? This That's exciting. Incredible. Zelda has a voice. What the <laughs> hell's going on? Do you want to just walk us through the process, how this came into your life, how this whole thing happened? Wow. Uh, so it, it kind of, it came and then I realized what it was. Uh, so I was on the verge of, um, well, I, I had just moved to LA and um, I've been, you know, working mostly out of Canada for a long time. So um, upon submitting a bunch of my materials and that sort of thing to various casting directors, I got this audition and from the audition, um, went into the studio to do to do this uh, particular, um, you know, role, which I didn't know what it was at the, at the time. I figured it was like a royal princess. Um, what was the word? Like how- that I went by, like, you know, yeah, classic and that okay. sort of thing. Um, weight of the world on her shoulders, um, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then from there, I got a callback several weeks later, went in for the callback. I had a feeling it was like a cool project, but I just had no idea what it was. And so um, right around the time of, of recording it, that's when it was broken to me <laughs> that it was, in fact, the role of Princess Zelda. And uh, it was a shocker. I would tell you that. I kind of flipped my, flipped my world a little bit. So you knew it was a video game and they just said some sort of classic character. Regal, mm-hmm. perhaps, like just vague and mysterious, like that. Yeah, I got that. You know, she was a young princess. That like those descriptors were there, um, but it was it, it obviously kept very vague what the what the actual story was. But upon retrospect, I'm like, oh yeah, of course, those were all they were they were all there, and they make a lot of sense now. <laughs> yeah. So I think in some fans' mind, they imagine like uh, Miyamoto from Nintendo sitting there going through the edition process. But is it entirely outsourced? Were there any Nintendo reps sitting on that edition? Or how involved was Nintendo in this process? Well, I think they were very involved. Um, they weren't necessarily in the room during the auditions, but um, like during a lot of the recording sessions, they would be. Um, it was a very collaborative process, had to get approved by a lot of people. Um, so it would have been uh, the casting director, director, uh, Jamie Mortolaro. He was a big part of the audition process. And, uh, and then that sort of got um, sent out uh, during the audition, and I'm assuming approved while it was um, being done. Sort okay. Of thing. Did Just you get any... partly live, partly not? Yeah. Here's a weird question. Do you know why you got the part? Do you know what they liked about the sound of your voice as embodying Princess Zelda? I have been asking myself that question. <laughs> I mean, not not that I don't agree with my voice in any way, but I mean, just to be just to be chosen for such a particular role as this. Uh, yeah, you you've got to go like, why me? Uh, how did that happen? Um, I I don't know. I I. I usually, in the past, I've been cast for roles that um, sort of the, the the depth of my voice has something to do with um, why why I get cast. A lot of female warriors and stuff like that. I, I wondered was it was it all the work I'd done previously, or <laughs> mixed with the sound of what I did, or I I, I really don't know. Um, <laughs> I imagine I went in with something that sounded kind of uh, classic, and I couldn't have predicted that's what they were looking for, but whatever the offering was, it, it seemed to make sense for them at the time. So Yeah. And so the script for the edition, was it just generic? Was it, hey, the blood moon rises once again? Or how specific there was There was no script? blood moon. No blood moon. <laughs> yeah, absolutely okay. not. Taking um, a note. It was, it was more generic. Uh, it was generic, but, you know, mirroring the themes that would um, ultimately become part of the real script. Right. <laughs> and so then when you actually... I figured read- I would have clued in or something. But <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so when you went in for the actual performance, then do you remember any direction that you were given from the voice director or even channeled from Nintendo through the voice director that really stuck with you? Hmm. Well, that's interesting. I haven't heard that question before. Um, or was it just, I'm just going to repeat the tone of my audition because I guess they like that. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of like testing of range um, as they were sort of narrowing down, like um, testing the dynamics of the voice and that sort of thing to see how far it stretched in either direction within that uh, sort of realm of a character as as they were probably like sculpting exactly what they wanted. But uh, whatever the tones were, were pretty, I think they were pretty decided upon, I guess. I, yeah. I can't really know. Totally. Just, well, what about uh, just the, the basics? I mean, you say classic. When you see the word classic, does that just mean, oh, British accent? Or where does the sound of the yeah, accent come from? That was actually in the description. Um, the British accent was in the description. So okay. I went in having prepped my my RP because because it was royal and uh, 
and obviously I didn't necessarily know the time period. These things can always change with video games. You can have one thing that can be secretly a whole nother thing and you have no idea. So I went with something that uh, I thought would be, you know, educated and um, relatively like somebody who is both held and uh, and with a bit of um, emotion within that within that world. But were there key yeah, references? RP seemed like a like a solid choice for me. <laughs> okay. Did you go on YouTube go on, like, and look up any like, like that? Did you look up any specific uh, British voices to try and get a rough sound? Have you been working on a British accent for a very long time? Uh, yeah, I actually I have. I, I did my master's of classical acting in London, so um, I was exposed to a lot of British accents at that time, and um, uh, I've done I've done it on stage for a bit. So it, it it was sort of it is the kind of for me the classic sort of educated. If you have a certain um, you know status in society, you tend to have something that something within the realm of received pronunciation, but you wouldn't want it to be too heightened, like uh, heightened RP. Uh, so I sort of I played with that a little bit. All right, I, I'm I'm very naive. Received pronunciation. So that's the RP you're talking about. So what does that mean exactly? Yeah, it's kind of the. How would you say that? I mean, it was developed. I'm going to get myself all in trouble here. Uh, <laughs> um, it's it's sort of the go-to. You could say like the BBC voice, formerly really like that kind of um, straightforward, standard, um, not too inflected with a particular region. Um, or place, but something that you would hear in like Downton Abbey, or um, actually, they're, they'd be like a really heightened version of RP. Um, I'm not really sure how to describe it. Really. Okay. Generalized <laughs> British, fancy British. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like educated, educated British from a certain class level, or okay. something like that. Yeah. Is there any way you can compare the actual performance of this game and the recording of it to other projects? Was it? A more difficult reporting recording process, easier. I mean, do you have to have more range, less range than usual? How would you put this in the stack against the other games you've worked on? Wow, um, I'd say it was challenging in that I'd, the the range that I was working in was pretty particular. It's it's a little higher than my my natural speaking voice, as, as you can hear. Um, it wasn't. And, and dubbing work particularly is quite, it's really, really detailed, fine work uh, that you have to sync up the, the lip flaps with like such detail. Um, so that in itself is a challenge. It takes a lot of focus in a room. If, if you do a four hour session, you have to be like really, really, you have to keep at it. You have to keep injecting life into it. But then there's the adrenaline of the size of the project that you're doing and you're like, wow. And so it really, it really carries you through in a lot of ways. Um, it is very different from some of the other roles I've done where there, that involves a lot of really heavy barking which is a different kind of stamina. Um, I love them both. Uh, but yeah, uh, where it stacks up, I'd say it was, it was pretty challenging, um, but not, not impossible. <laughs> That's interesting. I mean, the lack of heavy barking, just because Zelda isn't really in the gameplay section so much. So by heavy bark, you mean like, get that item over there, that like screaming, yeah, those types of things. Something that they call like barks and onos, you know, just uh, uh, in a session where you do, um, you know, sometimes you'll go and do a game and you get like just a sheet where you're just like, bah, bah, you do all the voices, you do all the, the, the deaths, all the sort of synchronized, uh, you know, hit by a bomb, fall down onto the floor and die, make it sound like you're falling off a cliff, uh, make it sound like you're on a horse panting or you know, whatever. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so there's none of that in this game. Yeah. When you read the script, were you ever confused about, wait, why isn't Link talking back? What is going on here? Am I just, it's all one-sided conversations. <laughs> right. Um, no, I had a feeling that he was going to be, that he was going to be silent uh, as, as the process was going on. And I only got bits of script just shortly before I was doing them. There wasn't a lot of like, we're going to send out this whole script to anybody and let anybody see. Cause it was, it was such uh, um, you know, protected material. <laughs> yeah yeah link links you know he speaks through his eyes it's fine <laughs> <laughs> his beautiful beautiful eyes yeah so when you found out that this is for the next zelda game how long did you have to keep that secret how difficult was it to keep the secret Ooh, well not telling people was not a problem for me because i was super paranoid about it um <laughs> just leaking in any fashion yeah. whatsoever but um yeah, I, I kept it. I held it for about a year. <laughs> I thought it might have had to have been longer because I, I didn't know what the release dates were either. Um, yeah, it was an interesting year holding that. Uh, yeah. Holding and then it was what, E3 last year? So like last June? I'm trying to remember when they first unveiled the trailer with the yeah. voice. Maybe it was, even, it was E3. 
Okay. It was E3, yeah, and they had the big Zelda world, and uh, it was and quite it, the event. I didn't attend, but I was watching from my computer, uh, you know, pouring over <laughs> the live streams and that sort of thing. Yeah, did you get a flood of people on Twitter then being like, is this you? This sounds familiar. Oh, gosh, no. I mean, it sounds so different from my, my speaking voice. There'd okay. be no way that anybody would have been able to tell that it was me by any stretch. It was quite out of the blue, but <laughs> yeah. So what's been there, the most... lot, there was a lot of speculation of if it was even the voice of Zelda at that point. So ah, that's right. Mm-hmm. So what? Uh, when did the reaction come? What sort of feedback have you received so far in the performance? Oh man, uh, it's been it's been a fascinating and incredible um, journey since this thing is released on March third, which was the first, of course, announcements of everything coming out. The first announcements of any our involvement as voice actors, uh, like particulars to that. Um, I, I just I get approached every day with lots of love online and um, I'm getting invited to places. Uh, I just got back from Kuwait. <laughs> at a, I was at a convention there, um, so I'm I'm just really looking forward to this journey this year. I'm at the very beginning of it. Uh, it's it's been extraordinary and a little overwhelming, but all in a good way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just the convention life, like. Not that you need to spend the rest of your life at conventions, but in a way you could be set for life just going to conventions and having a huge banner with the awesome Princess Zelda art from Breath of the Wild. <laughs> You're set. Just fandom for life. I I suppose. I mean, I don't look at it like that. I've got a lot of other things that I will do and have done and want to do. Um, but I'm I'm certainly appreciating the hype while it's here. And that will be a big part of my year is obviously just accommodating this uh, this role and this this lore into my into my everyday. It's, it's fascinating. And I love conventions. I mean, I haven't gone to many, I've just started, but you meet the most amazing people who all love fantasy there. It's like, they're the best group of people to meet. What, what do they say to you? What's the most common refrain that fans say to you at those conventions? A common refrain? Yeah. What do they constantly ask you? I usually, um, I've had a lot of people just say that they grew up with this franchise and that it means the world to them and they are so happy that there's voice acting and they're so happy to meet me. And I'm like, wow, I'm happy to meet you too. (laughs) It's like, you're like, I'm meeting the best people. I'm meeting all the people who are really happy to meet me. (laughs) Yeah, you say they're happy to have voice acting finally in this series. I mean, that must have been so much pressure were there discussions in the recording process i don't know the voice director or anybody else about like hey we should all acknowledge that this is a big deal that zelda's finally breaking the seal and adding full voice acting here it wasn't i don't think there was really time for a lot of discussion um you know inside the room it was pretty focused work uh pretty pretty efficient space because there was a lot to do and it and the work was very detailed and you know took the time that it took so it was all very focused when it came to actual recording. But of course, we were all like, I, I mean, you know, I'm giggling like fools, like, oh, my God, this is so amazing all the, all the time. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm really only now meeting a lot of the voice, voice actors that I shared the experience with. So i um, probably going to be, uh, be Bill, who plays my father, um, uh, Elizabeth Maxwell, who plays Urbosa. I'll be hooking up with them at some conventions this year. And I just I can't wait. It's going to be it's going to be pretty cool. That's going to be really uh, satisfying. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what does the future look like for you? Have you already done any recording for any DLC for Zelda you can talk about? <laughs> Is- <laughs> First of all, if I had been, I would not be able to speak about that at all. Uh, but right. um, uh I'm going to I'm just going to completely forget that question because I can't there's no way I could answer it anyway. But um, the future looks for me like I'm, I'm working on other games. Um, I still do TV film. I'm writing music. Um, those are my general everydays. And I split my time between uh, Canada and the U.S. And I just kind of fly back and forth at random. <laughs> so I'm just a bit like unplanted and uh, and enjoying myself flying around everywhere i guess yeah <laughs> have you noticed any i don't know any doors opening when you have like the first real princess mm-hmm. zelda on your imdb page it's not a bad uh, detail there have people mm-hmm. talked about that with you just in the audition process have they been like what princess zelda oh my god funny enough it hasn't well actually in some of the games that i'm working on now um I'll be working on a different game with a different company and then have people kind of nerd out and take selfies with me and then bring in their stuff to get autographs. Uh, That's interesting because it (laughs) kind of gives me more clout working on other games, which is kind of fun. Uh, But as far as like, I don't know, TV and film and stuff like that, there isn't a heck of a lot of crossover at this time. So I'm hoping there will be more in the future. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Was there any feedback that's really stood out to you? You want to share any 
any misconceptions people may have about the process or anything you want to clear up that you see online? Oh, gosh. Um, it's interesting. I, I feel like whatever um, people have been, because of course you get trolling and stuff like that as well. Um, I've had a lot of people who have um, warmed up to my voice who initially were skeptical of it. I think there was a lot of very impassioned people who had an idea of what they wanted it to sound like. And um, I'm sure they're going to, you just, you get every perspective and I respect them all as long as they are reasonable <laughs> and not mean. <laughs> but um, I think one of the nice things has been recently, a lot of people have approached me and said, I was, I was skeptical at first. I didn't know what to expect. And then upon playing the game and beating the game, I just like, I really just have to reach out to you right now and tell you how much I love it and blah, blah, blah. So that's been something that's been uh, deeply nice and satisfying for me Yeah, uh, as a voice actor. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Really appreciate it. And uh, congratulations on Zelda. I think it's selling all right. <laughs> yeah, I heard it's selling all right. Yeah, really happy for Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, but cool. Thanks again for joining us, Patricia. <laughs> thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this excerpt from the Game Informer Show podcast. You can click right here if you want to subscribe and listen to the audio version of the full show. Full episodes air every Thursday and they feature Game Informer editors sitting around talking about the biggest reviews, previews. We talk about exclusive impressions of Game Informer's cover stories. We have long form developer interviews, everything that's great in gaming. So every Thursday, be sure to check it out.